Hey, Emily, um, you just joined. So we are just sharing in the chat uh, how we are feeling today, just one adjective. And I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing a lot. I'm seeing joyful, interested, curious, eager, very excited, curious, excited, uh, very well to be with good friends and colleagues, uh, relaxed, curious, and, and great. Um, so these are all very <laughs> positive adjectives, and uh, this is just a very quick um, glance of what our section will be about today. Um, it about it's about creating change with authenticity and compassion. Um, specifically, how can authentic and compassionate communication create a shift, both within ourselves as well as when we are in relationship with other partners. And um, we are so excited to have this learning section today led by Karina and Kyoko. Uh, if you two can raise your hands uh, so everyone knows. So Karina is a communication coach for healthy health professionals and the former director of the global health programs at PCI Media. And uh, Kyoko is a restorative justice coordinator and facilitator at a Michigan-based local nonprofit called the Dispute Resolution Center, which offers healing approaches to conflict resolution. Um, so we have a very packed uh, schedule today, very interactive, and I'll pass it to Karina to, to start the section today. Thank you. Thank you. And just in the spirit of starting off with authenticity, I can just tell you, I am really excited and um, and also a little bit nervous. So I'm just taking a breath here oh, and fully arrive with you. Thank you. Um, so Kyoko and I, in the preparation for today, thought about, okay, in 90 minutes, what are we gonna focus on? And so we decided we start in like with the core unit, the first unit where change starts to happen. And that is within ourselves. And in order to, to start there, we are talking about connecting with ourselves. And so before I share with you a few slides, I just wanna also mention that this is gonna be a very hands-on activity um, packed learning session. So if you were thinking about driving a car in a couple minutes, maybe we think that we're gonna have um, a couple of worksheets and breakout sessions and it's gonna be fun. So I'll share my screen with you and take you to a few slides. And let me just get you a little on the top. Okay, so just to align ourselves, um, how, what do we mean by the key terms here in our title that guide us through the session, which is compassion and authenticity. This compassion, and there are many, many definitions, but for us, compassion is an emotional response to someone else's suffering, can be our own, involving an authentic desire to help, to be there to accompany. And authenticity for us is when we are in harmony, when we are in concordance with how, like what is going on inside of us and how we can show up and, and express ourselves to others, to the outside world. And the underlying concept for today is the nonviolent communication concept from Marshall Rosenberg. There are other um, there are other strategies and other scholars that influence Kyoko's work and my work, but for this part today, I think Marshall's work was the key driver in informing what we're gonna do. And there is um, there are many different aspects of nonviolent communication, but what we're gonna focus on is the aspect of self-connection and self-compassion. Okay, 
And so I, I added this image here because it helped me a lot. And for me, a couple of light bulbs went on when I did my first workshops in that area, which is that there is an idea that communication is not just between um, a sender and a receiver, but there is a third component, which is the self-connection. And we can think of that as the self-connection being, being the roots, being the foundation of everything else that makes it possible for us to then listen with empathy and with compassion and to, to express ourselves with authenticity. And so why all of that, why self-connection? If we are connected to ourselves and what matters to us and what's important to us, we have a certain clarity um, around what we stand for, what we do wanna to communicate to start with. And it allows us to make a choice on how we would like to show up. And we have clarity on what needs of ours are most important in the moment that we would like to communicate. And sometimes our needs cannot be met. We all know that on a daily basis. And so by the self-connection though, we have an option to mourn those needs that cannot be met and start a healing process. And the self-connection can also bring a change from I must do something towards I choose to do something, which lands differently in our bodies. Um, if I have clarity on why I do something, I can say instead of I must go to work today, I can say I choose to go to work today because financial stability is really important to me. And that has that is landing differently and lives differently inside of me. Okay. But a first exercise, we're gonna um, we're gonna walk you through a couple of um, of questions, and before we go to that worksheet, we're also gonna open up and just get you into um, some thinking around how communication can be affected by showing up authentically or not. Um, but because that is something that we often don't use, use on a daily basis, it's almost like a muscle that we can train. And so I just put that slide here to have a few descriptions present and ready for you that may inspire you when we describe later in the worksheet how something feels in your body. Okay, and we're also gonna ask you to not just sense into your body, but to also to describe what feeling it is connected to and what would explain that feeling, what need stands behind it. And naming feelings and needs is also a tool from nonviolent communication. And there is an impact that is described through neuroscience that I'm gonna talk later about it. Um, but again, it's like learning a new language um, that we are not so used to. Okay, so let me stop sharing here. And before we go to that worksheet, I'll hold on. Okay, let me just do that first. I can see you. Okay. Um, before we do that, I'm going to ask me if she can take us over to a chain board that where we can just answer a question around um, when there was a situation when it was hard for you professionally or personally, when you were in relationship, when you were in collaboration and it felt really hard to be authentic in that moment and what made it hard. And I wonder if we have the link already here. Yes, we do. Thank you, Ni. So if you yes. click on that, you're gonna see a window open. I'm gonna share my screen again so that you can all see it together what's happening on the on the jam board. Oh. 
Does someone have a question about how to use the Jamboard or is that all good? Um, yeah, I, I, I could also, um, okay, you can share your screen now. We could see your, we could see your, see your screen. Okay. So um, you can see all the answers coming in. I came in late. This is Bea. Sorry, I came in late. Karina, can you need just remind, um, do, do we, do we have access to this? How do I get into this? Um, so there is a link Jamboard that I just dropped in the chat. I'll, I'll, I'll drop it again. And on the left, there will be an option to add a sticker notes, sticky notes. Uh, it's the fourth one um, from the top, from top down. It, can everyone access that, that sticky note option? Yeah, it's the fourth one right there. Fourth one, yeah, if you click on it, you can add your answer. If you click on it, um, Karina, is it okay if you, yeah, try to click on it and there will be an, a sticky note option and you can just add your answers to it. Does anyone have any question on how to use the Jamboard? Oh, there's one coming in. See if I can make the number. Okay. And I'm gonna start to read if that's okay for you all. Otherwise, just tell me and I, I'm more quiet for a longer time. Um, speak, feeling well, oh, hold on. There is it. <laughs> Feeling vulnerable when speaking authentically. I felt afraid that I will offend someone. It often comes from fear. Not feeling that I could trust them to engage openly and constructively. I rarely speak authentically in meetings in my day job. There are too many potential pitfalls and verbal shouts. I can't pronounce it, <laughs> um, that happen, that make it scary or just not worth it. Yeah, yeah. Someone said something that felt very judgmental but did not, was not aware. How do you bring it up? Okay. How can we address that if something happens that's not? in line with our needs and with our values. Yeah. When there is an unsolved personal issue with a colleague and we are in a group meeting. Yeah. Having a very hard time working remotely and with teams far away from each other, disconnected, dehumanized. There is no place for expressing my feelings in a situation where I have to deliver. Um, we have one more question for you, which is, and we have a jam board too. So let's see if we can make it work. Otherwise, feel free to just write in the chat. That's totally okay too. What costs did you experience in that situation where you felt you can't speak your truth, where you felt you can't show up with your authentic self, where there are costs tied to it. Oh, thank you, Bia. I love that. <laughs> I feel that. So there is another link from Lee, but there. Yeah, I see people. Thank you. Yes, that works. Okay, so I'm going to try to share that with you. And I promise I'm not going to touch it much, so it should stay as it is. Okay, so the costs that come in, mental health cost is high. I felt not myself. 
I couldn't contribute what I wanted. Um, oh, hold on. That's... Mm -hmm. I couldn't contribute what I wanted, um, but it was important. And the costs are developing resentments and shame. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Started to feeling demonstrate. Oh, hold on. Demotivated, of course. Demotivated about the project. Yes, yes. Despite caring for the issues. Of course, of course, it's like, we can't be ourselves. Whose is it? Whose ownership is it at the end then? Um, I'm moving. You know what? My eyes get really a little worse this time. <laughs> Can someone read the little one, the little text? Um, yes. Around things that I care. Things that I care about have put off or not discussed mental and physical health connected to frustration, future unwillingness to participate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you for that collect co connection, um, collection. It, um, it, it, it shows how it feels often like the easy choice or the, the safe choice to stay quiet. Um, but when we look at our costs, it, it has its price too. Um, thank you for sharing so openly with us. Okay, I'm gonna leave that slide. I'm gonna stop sharing for a second and I'm gonna pull up the first worksheet and me, would you be able to share the worksheets with the participants along with a feelings and needs list just for you if you want to to get inspired on how to name something um, that is a document you can open and type in so you don't need to print it out but i'm also going to share my screen for the ones that have trouble downloading it and so you can see it And I am handing to you, Kyoko. All right, thank you. And thank you everyone for sharing about the, the difficulty that you felt and also how did it impact you and what was the cost? That's um, often not talked about. And when we think about the cost, there are there are quite a few, and I'm sure that, that I, I resonated with many of it as, as far as the cost goes. So I'm sure that's, um, that's the case for everyone too. So for the, then what do I do? What do we do? That's the question. And we talked about the cell connection. So here is the sheets that we can actually follow through. It's gonna ask about the first one, which you could use the first question, that they, the ones that we put, we shared in the Jumboard. And not so much about storytelling. It's more focus on this is what happened. And it, it's really not important to go into the nitty gritty details, but just the snapshot of that moment. And we also going to talk about how did it felt that moment for both bodily sensation and any feelings. And if the feeling, you know, describing the feeling or think about in the feeling term, that's not your thing. And then we have the sheets that you can use, just use as a guidance. And this is not so much about like finding the right one, but just looking into like, oh, this one, this one. So this is something that, um, yes, Bia, that's, uh, that's so much about the resonance and finding what is it that's really 
happening in me. So we take the moment to think about what's happening. And we're going to give you a um, few minutes to fill this one out quietly. Give some time to go through this one. And if you have any questions, please just uh, raise your voice or put in the chat. Would you enjoy a brief demo? Let me just check. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, I can't see you anymore because let me just stop share. Can mm -hmm. I? Uh, can I just see if <laughs> Sarah Payton? Um, I'm doing a certification program with her to become a resonant healing practitioner. Yes, <laughs> you see that coming through, huh? <laughs> you oh my goodness. Okay, we gotta talk. Um, would people enjoy a little demonstration before they go into the worksheet? Yes. Okay, I hear a yes. Kyoko, would you like to um, to walk through a quick demo? Sure. Okay. Um, so I can. I have plenty of experiences <laughs> um, with that. Um, one, one example that comes to mind was I was at a conference. I asked a question. It was online. So I, I asked my question and I see in the chat popping up a comment that said, this question belongs in beginner classes. And what I felt in my body in that moment was like, I felt gutted. I felt like a punch comes towards my, my belly. I felt my shoulders sink in. Um, and the feelings behind was embarrassment, shame, sadness, and the needs where that were not met in that moment for me were contributing um, growth and belonging to this community. So that gives you a quick idea of how to go about it. Is there any needs that you can think of that explain your feelings? You mean me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, the really the need to to contribute to offer something to the group instead of asking something that someone thinks belongs in a beginner class um, or you, you know belonging to this community and not being like outside of it by asking something that seems ridiculous. Yeah. Are we supposed to put sticky notes also, or are we supposed to just think about it and write somewhere? Did you um, did you see the link from me? Um, the first one, or it's it's a PDF that you can download. It's called Rain Barrel Learning Session Worksheets. It's in the chat. Does that work for you? Does it come up? Otherwise, I can share my screen. So it came up. So it's a worksheet just for me. It's not something that I post somewhere, right? That is right. That is right. Okay, gotcha. Right now, we focus on the first one. Okay. Yeah. And if you are finalizing it, um, maybe just raise your hand for us virtually or physically so we get a sense how much time is needed.
Does anybody need more time? Good. Yes, okay. Yes, thank you. Karina, and just it's still the first section, right? The first, only the first box, not the feelings of the body yet. Yeah. No, you can you can continue. You okay. can continue. You can make the first worksheet. You can fill out the first worksheet, the first page, the the first box, and then the body sensation feelings in it. I'm gonna share my screen again with you and take you back to just a few slides. Are you seeing the worksheets or, you know, you see this, right? The worksheet, the, the slide of the worksheet page. Perfect. And I just saw something else, but I got you now. Okay. Yep. Great. Okay. So when we think of connecting with ourselves, there are a few things that make it easier to get into that space. And the first stepping stone is being present. And that sounds so easy, but it's sometimes so hard. If we are in our day-to-day, -day, if things have to be done, if we are like just like an automated way of working, it can require some um, intention and mindfulness to find these little moments of presence where we can check in with ourselves and see how are we doing right now. Then the curiosity and openness. And I, I think I saw a couple curiosities coming from you this morning, joining us um, in this learning session. So bringing, um, bringing an openness on what is there and, and the warmth can help to, to look at things that are not always so easy to look at, but to do it with a certain quality of warmth and holding us, holding ourselves. And then this was important for Kyoko and myself to add here because we don't wanna just come here and tell you self-connect, it's amazing and, and, and leave it there because we also wanna be real and, and share with you and you, you know that from your experience, of course, that when we are in self-connection, there are moments when that is really tough to do, where there is a discomfort because we have a array of emotions that are not all positive. And it requires to have some capacity in that moment to be in that space. And sometimes that means I can open the door to self-connection all the way, and sometimes I can open the door just a little bit <laughs> and put one foot in and then had enough for that, for that time and that moment. The benefits when we are able to be connected with ourselves and what matters to us is again, the clarity that comes with it and we can hit the emergency brakes of our story train. And what I mean by that is coming back to my example I gave earlier of being in this conference and hearing from someone, my question is for a beginner's class. I was immediately leaving that conference in my mind. I was getting on a story train that is very familiar to me. I was transported back to the kitchen table 
um, as a kid where I heard education and studying is for other people. You do something practical and something um, more hands-on that is safer. Um, don't worry about being smart, kind of. And I, I say it a little um, over the top, but so you get the idea. So I was on this train. And by being able to connect to myself, I was able to see that, to recognize that, and to be like, oh, hold on a minute. I am not in the real situation right now. And I was able to unmute and to ask the facilitator if it's okay for me to just clarify if that question is valuable to the group because I do not want to ask something that is not of value for the whole group. I can get that answer otherwise. And interesting enough, the, the person that put the comment in the chat was coming off mute as well and said, no, 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 this question is so important. It belongs in every beginner class. And so by me being able to connect and realize what's going on, I was able to speak up and get clarification. And I had a really different experience in that conference than I otherwise would have had. Um, and so when we have that clarity of what's going on inside of us, we have the foundation and what it takes to give ourselves compassion and empathy. And that is really a beautiful, powerful tool to have because we will be in moments where we can't always make an emergency call to our empathy body and be like, I need help right now. Um, and so it's good to have that in your toolbox, being able to regulate yourself, to calm yourself. Okay, and so with that, we're gonna go to another worksheet. And for that worksheet, I would invite you to go into small groups um, because there is a different experience if you can share what you discovered for yourself with somebody else. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna leave it up to Kyoko to, to talk us through the worksheet, but um, let me pull it up again for you as well. So you see it and you have it in the PDF that Ni shared earlier. It's the second, the second page on that document, okay? Thank you, thank you. And I should have asked actually earlier at the project if anybody um, unable to join the, the small group that we're gonna do some practice in the small group and unable to join for whatever the reason, can you put the X mark on at the beginning of your name, then it's easier to sort people out. So that's one logistic thing. Can you repeat that, Yoko? Yeah, if you cannot join the um, small group that we're gonna do, put the X mark in, in front of your name. So that's that. So essentially the, uh, the next exercise is the same thing, but having some witness. The, the one of the things that's really difficult, you know, we can always rely on like, like Karina said, sometimes we can't really call our buddies or our friends that who has the, these caring um, empathic ears. So, but it's also important to have somebody witnessing and accompanying. That's another exercise. How it's like to accompany and just be with somebody. So this one holds both two, the, the, the exercise two holds. One is to exercise, like really get in touch with ourselves. And another part is how it's like to be present for when other people are doing that. So maybe we can do a little demo what we are doing in the, in, in the breakup. So one thing that the first thing, that the, the instruction for this demo, well, well I'm sorry, not demo, the, the, class, the, the breakout is the first, if you haven't finished um, 
then maybe you can think of, or if you want to think about some other situation that's just came up while we were thinking about it, you start one and a brief description of what happened. Again, you don't have to tell the whole story. Um, then, well, let's do the demo, Karina. Yeah, yeah, let's walk through yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in the first, in the first paragraph here that you see, I would just make a sentence and say, I was at a conference and as a response to a question I heard, this is a question for a beginner class, which made me feel ashamed and sad because it's really important to me to belong to this community and contribute. And then I go here, which is a blueprint for you to try out how it can sound if we give ourselves compassion. So all you have to do is to say, okay, I am so, and for me, embarrassed and sad, which makes total sense because I do wanna belong here. I do wanna be part of this community and I do wanna contribute. That is so important to me. Or I could say, and just, I gave you two different options because we all speak differently. And of course, this is just an example. You can give yourself resonance and, and empathy how it sounds for you. But you could also say, no wonder I'm sad because I have such a longing to be seen and respected in this community. Okay. And, and then after that, we invite you to just take a breath and feel into your body if you feel a slight move in your body sensations, if you feel you can breathe a little bit deeper or if there is any other sign of relaxation. And it might not be because this is very technical right now and you're probably more in your mind than in your body doing this and that's totally okay. So how about, um, how about we doing a little bit of them or using what Natalia shared. Um, what I could do is maybe I'm just on a guessing. I'm totally guessing how it was like for you. So you're feeling really angry and feeling really contracted, frustrated. I feel so angry and frustrated and I'm so sick of tired of this situation over and over again. I'm very tired. And which makes it total sense to me because I really need ease. I need some cooperation and understanding from my friend, for, for my daughter, that I have some obligation I need to do. And I really wish that I had that we ease. No wonder when I don't have that ease and understanding, it makes me really angry and tired. Karina, would you be willing to be my empathy buddy and give me some reflection? Sure, sure. Um, I mean, you just provided the empathy, right? So for me, I would feel that there is someone out there that gets me. I would feel um, that I'm not alone with my frustration and anger. Um, and what gives me some relief in that moment is that I have someone that is just being with me and doesn't try to fix the problem for me. I think I would have a different reaction right now if you would have come and told me, Karina, just get her a watch. Just make a checklist and let her go through that checklist. Um, that I would have felt would make me even more small and angry. So for you to just be with me in that moment and reflect my emotions and my needs, for me, it felt um, like, I, again, I can, I can take a breath. Thank you. Talia, this is kind of quick version, but how is it like for you to hear that? No, yes, thank you. Thank you, very useful, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
So let's take a, um, so what we would like to do is I'm going to put the, this one into the, the um, chat um, as the instruction um, for the, what we are doing in the small group. So first person, share your self-compression using, if you have other methods to give yourself a self-compression, by all means, please do. But if you are not sure, like, what does it mean to give the self-compression, you could use this format. I'm feeling this because, you know, it makes sense it, because I'm, I need this. It totally makes sense. And just giving that I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, no wonder I feel this way. And take a moment. As a listener, then what your job as a listener is to provide the full presence, full presence, just listen to it. And, um, and maybe you can repeat back, exactly repeat back the same sentence as that person said, so that person have more chance to hear from other people and how it was like. Every time it's a good idea to take a little moment to breathe, um, then switch, next person. Any questions for what you are doing in the small group? I see your, your request, Paul, thank you. So Ni, when you are ready. Oh. Mm, welcome back. Thank you for, well, first of all, thank you for doing the exercise and going into the group, small group, which can be a little vulnerable. Um, to share, especially when we don't share the same space. Um, some of you, I don't know, some of you maybe never really talk to each other. So that can be a little vulnerable and I really appreciate and recognize that, that thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, and of course it just happened like boom, brought back in the middle of the conversation. Um, but yeah, so we want to, uh, the before we finishing up, we want to talk, and uh, share a little bit about, do we have time to share about what the, what the empathy does? Um, I, I do mm -hmm. want to respect everyone's time. So what I'm mm -hmm. going to do is we're going to share all the slides with you. And what you will see on the slides are, I, the, the, I put two neuroscientists there. If you're interested in mm -hmm. the evidence on how compassion works on our nervous system and how we can self-regulate us. So you will have that there. Um, and then you also have our contact information. So feel free to reach out. You do have a third worksheet that we invite you to do after, after this session, which is to reflect on if there is an inner space, an inner shift that can be created through the compassion that allows you to then make a decision about, I wanna engage with that person or I wanna ask for another pause. And keep in mind, I just wanna mention it because some of you brought these questions that led us already into expressing ourselves or engaging with someone else, really listening to someone else. And that is really like, we can keep that for, another learning session in the future. But for today, we really wanted to focus on this first step on the foundation of connecting with ourselves and giving ourselves compassion is possible. I do it often as a journal. So instead of telling someone what's going on, I journal it and that just works as beautiful. Um, and before we ask you with an ending question, uh, I, I do want to share one resource with you 
if you are in the field of giving communication trainings to health professionals, adding compassion can make such a big difference. There is a book, it's called Compassionomics. It's written by a physician and a researcher. And um, I can tell you that they did the biggest lit review I know of on compassion on the socio-ecological model in healthcare. And they saw findings that are not as surprising and findings that totally surprised me. They found on the individual level that compassion has the power to decrease viral load in HIV patients, to balance um, blood sugar levels in diabetes patients, that patients are more adhering to the treatment and take their medication if communicated with compassion. They found on the physician level that was the most important for me as a health professional myself, it's not just about me getting compassion, it's about allowing me to give compassion. If I can communicate with patients 40 seconds in compassion, I do the best I can to prevent burnout and be resilient. And on an organizational level, they found that hospitals save millions of dollars through compassion by less medical error, by less diagnostic that's needed, and by less turnaround. I'm sorry, I had to share that. <laughs> that is so important to me. Um, but with that, I hand over to Kyoko for closing questions and just say thank you from the bottom of my heart. So that, um, again, like this is just a little bit of opening. And um, I want the, 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 what we wished to give the, the experience of today is how is it like to connect with you and find a space? So in that space, you can choose what your next action would be. So what we would like to hear from you is if you could put in the chat maybe one or two words. What was your experiences like in last hour and a half that we shared together? And your takeaways. Or another thing you could write is one thing you can do starting today. Thank you. Have a good day. Insightful, great food for thought. Oh, good. Yeah. Again, we are not looking for the perfection. So we're just finding the community and the muscle building. Thank you so much for building the, the coming and willing to exercise and sharing yourself. I really appreciate that everyone's showing up and doing your work, yearning for more, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, practice self-compassion. All right, thanks much and see you again. Bye. Thank Bye. you very much.